and we are live i think i need to adjust this just a tad bit there we go so we are live why is having a routine so important to making and keeping a home i'm going to answer that question and more on tonight's tnt live so stay with me as I talk about the importance of routines for traditional homemakers and give you three tips on how to create your own. Hey, homemakers, I'm so glad you were able to join me tonight. Last week, our session was on fire. It was just so nice. And I thought tonight would be a good time to follow up on our topic. I really emphasized the importance of having a routine last week, but I didn't talk about how to create a routine to manage your home. So I thought, why don't I get into how to actually create a routine for yourself? So that's what I'm gonna do first, is give you three tips on how to create a routine of your own so that you can make and keep a home the way you want it to be, and then, or either possibly even borrow a routine, and then I'll get into some Q&A. So that's what we're going to do tonight. And if we're just meeting, I'm Denise Jordan, and I teach traditional homemaking for today's homemaker. So if you wanna learn more about making and keeping a home, go ahead and hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any upcoming videos. Okay, let's get into it. So. Or rather, before I get into it, I'll give a few greetings. And then once I give a few greetings, I'll get into tonight's content so that um, we won't be interrupted. And then once I'm done with tonight's contents, then I'll do the Q&A. And keep in mind that while I'm trying to like give you guys the notes, look at my notes, talk to you guys and see the comments over there, sometimes I might miss something. So if I miss your question, put it in again and put the word question in capital letters in front of your question, and then that'll help me to see it. And my moderator is not going to be on tonight. Nikki Blue Skies is not going to be on tonight. So if I miss a question, put it in there again and so that to make sure I see it and I'll get to all of the questions. So let me give a few greetings. And right now we have got Wild Harmony is on. I like that. Oh, look at that pretty little baby she's holding. So Wild Harmony. Hello, greetings. And Wild Harmony, tell me a little bit about yourself. Are you a homemaker? Is that why you jumped on tonight? Must be with that sweet little adorable baby doll I see you're holding. And then take me to Tammy's house is here as well. Hey, how are you doing? And then Michelle from My Everyday Wife Life. Michelle, if you could possibly help me tonight keeping track of questions since Blue Skies is not going to be on. Oh, wait, nope. I see Big Red 85. Hey, Big Red, you've joined us before. I enjoy that. And then Yolanda Walker is here. And Blue Sky says, I'm here. So, hey, Blue Skies, I'm glad to have you with us tonight. Faith is saying hello. Miss Congeniality is here. She's one of my best supporters. And she's already throwing down a circle to say circle up, which means let's start taking care of business. So, um, I'll do that. And Wild Harmony says, yes, she has four babies. And uh, Miss Congeniality is giving her greetings. So I am going to go ahead and get started with tonight's content. And then we'll get some questions answered. So, you know, last week, one of the things we did was talk about what a traditional homemaker is and that kind of thing. And I talked a little bit about some of the things I wish I had known as a young homemaker. But as I go back now and really think about my life as a homemaker, and I've managed a home for more than 45 years, you guys, long enough that I don't even tell you how long it's been. But when I think about like over the years that I've managed a home, what would have really helped me most was if I would have known the importance of making and creating a routine and then following that routine. Now, what do I mean by routine? Well, what I mean is doing something consistently. It could be daily, weekly, 
monthly and seasonally, but it's having a routine that I follow in keeping my home something consistent. And I will admit that that was not an example that I saw growing up. My mom was not the best housekeeper, but she did keep house. And there were six of us, and I'm sure we were more than a handful. So things were a little bit just kind of all over the place at times. So I didn't learn the importance of having a routine. So when I was a young homemaker, Sometimes things were all over the place. I spent my weekends trying to keep the house, you know, get the house clean and do laundry and all those things when I wasn't at home. When I was a stay-at-home mom and I was a stay-at-home mom intermittently, I was able to stay on top of things most of the time. But when I was working, it was a whole different story. So I wish I had known the importance of having a routine. Now, let me just say real quick, why it's important to have a routine. Routine, and I'm going to just type this in. Routines give you structure. So sometimes I might have things spelled just a little bit wrong when I'm trying to type them in pretty quick. So bear with me. Like I got a punctuation mark there that shouldn't be. But why is it important to have a routine? Because routines give you structure. That's why they're so important. They give you structure. It kind of helps to take some of that rush, rush, rush out of your day. And it gets rid of some of the chaos in your life. You just don't feel so overwhelmed with things. So it is important to have a routine. You know what you're going to do. And if, you're, if you've are if you got it down like you should, not only do you know what you're going to do, you know when you're going to do it. So you just feel more in control. And you're also much more productive. That's the important thing because once you start the routine, you're more likely to finish it so you get more things done. Um, it's just helpful all the way around. And then routines give you confidence. So not only do you get structure, you're more productive and confident. So like I said, no. not only are you more organized, but you're more productive and you're also more confident because once you start executing those routines, you're like, hey, I can do this. I can get things done. And once you begin to see the benefits of it, you become more confident in your abilities to be the kind of homemaker that you want to be. So room, so routines help you become more confident. And as you grow in confidence, as you see yourself making strides in making and keeping the kind of home that you want to have, you really believe more in yourself. And then the beauty of the routine is you don't have to think about it because once it becomes a routine, a habit, you just do it. You just get up and you just kind of get things started according to the schedule that you set aside for yourself and you just get it done. And the nice thing about having a routine is there is no catching up and there's no getting behind. If life happens today and you're not able to do some of the things on your routine, well, you just go on till tomorrow and you do whatever's on the schedule for tomorrow. You just let yesterday go. So routines definitely give you confidence. So there's that. So then the next thing to think about then is how do you create a routine for your home? And so my first tip for you is to be realistic. You want to be realistic about having, about what you can actually do. And let's just say, I just happened to peek over here and I saw that Sandy Bryant says she has a daily routine and she feels so accomplished. So how many of you out there have a daily routine that you 
execute every day. And then how do you feel as a result of that? Sandy says she feels so confident when she gets her routines done. They just help you stay on top of things. So there's that. Michelle that My Everyday Wife Life says she has tasks that she does every day, but she doesn't do them in a timely manner. She needs to do them first thing in the morning. And Michelle, that's something that I'm going to be coming to in just a minute. So here is the question then that you might consider asking yourself is, well, how do you create a routine for your home? And as I said, the first thing you want to do is to be realistic about what you can accomplish in a day. So that being said, you want to make a list of all of the tasks, all the things that need to happen in your house. So what you would do is you would just kind of take a pencil and paper, a little notebook, and just kind of look around your house, go from room to room, and make a list of all the things that need to happen in that room. So for example, if I was making a list about this office, then I would think, okay, I need to you know, make sure the desk is clean. I would vacuum the floor. I have things I need to file. I need to dust the appliances, you know, the equipment, the printer, those kind of things. Make sure the books are shelved. So you think about what are the things in that room that needs to happen. And then seasonally, I probably need to clean the woodwork in here, have the carpet cleaned in here a couple times a year, um, clean the window. So what are all the things that need to happen in every single room? And then once you do that, you would make a list. So now let me see. I think I tried to put together a slide to kind of show you guys what are some of the things that I'm talking about. Uh, so before I do that, uh, Blue Sky says that she needs to work on a morning, noon, and night routine. We'll talk about that in just a minute. Uh, Tammy says she's got somewhat of a routine. And then uh, Viva wants to know what suggestions do I have for moms who work full time? Uh, Viva, be sure to drop that question in again because I'm going to answer that toward the end. But let me just get the basics out first. And then uh, VM says she doesn't have one but needs to have one because they're routine. And then uh, Clink says that her routines are comforting for helping her to take care of her family. So now let me see if I can figure out how to get this slide shared. Um, so I'm going to share the screen and share the screen. And I'm going to share the screen and I'm going to pick this window here. And I'm going to share that screen. So when you take a look at um, like what are some examples of what needs doing, this is just a, a list of some of the things that I just kind of jotted down that you might have on the list of things that you need to do in your house. So if you guys can see the screen, let me know because this iPad is not uh, doing what it should be doing right now. So I can't see whether or not you guys can see what I see. So drop me a comment over here as to whether or not you can see um, the slide that I have up. And it says a few examples of what needs sharing. If you can see it, okay, good. You can see it. That's all I need to hear. So here are some of the things you might have on the list, like laundry, dishes, sweeping and vacuuming, mopping floors, stripping beds, cleaning the refrigerator, uh, cleaning up the living room or family room, decluttering. I know I need to do that here. Um, and so you can just kind of see what the list of things are here that just kind of needs doing. And I just put up just a list of just a few of those. So I'm going to stop sharing that now. And then, you know, you might even have things on there like stripping the bed and those kinds of things. And then there's also a um, list of daily activities also that you might need to do. So I'm going to share the screen again.
And then some of the daily activities that you might consider include things like doing the dishes, cleaning the kitchen, sweeping the floor, laundry. Yes, laundry is an everyday activity. Uh, clutter, check, swish and swipe. And these are the things that I do daily because if it doesn't happen, my house can tend to get away with me. So that's why I have these things down for daily activities. What are some of the things that you might consider to be daily activities? Drop them over in the chat box. I'm just a little bit curious as to what you might see as being a daily activity. But now here is, and then um, also there's going to be things like weekly or um, monthly things that you might also consider that needs to happen. So for example, there are weekly activities. Um, and for me, since I follow the Fly Lady cleaning system, this is a list of the weekly activities that I follow. And I know that looks a little bit small. I thought it was going to be larger than that. Sorry, but Monday, weekly home blessing. Tuesday um, is my free day. Wednesday, planning or desk day. Um, Thursday, errand day. Friday, car and purse day. Saturday, family fun day. And Sunday, renew your spirit, which is like you go to church or temple or some kind of online activity to renew your faith, that kind of thing. These are the things that I do, but what might be the way you organize your week? Maybe you want to do laundry on Monday and Tuesday. Maybe on Wednesday, you want to clean the kids room. Maybe another day you pick the living room. You know, you get to decide where and when you kind of put those things in there. So there's that. And so now I'm seeing people are putting a few things in like, um, Sandy Bryant says making her bed's a daily activity. And then also Tammy agrees with her. Michelle says her daily five are make the bed, touch up the bathroom, laundry, dishes and counters, and straightens the whole house. Um, Blue Skies says making her bed and washing the dishes. Wild Harmony says dishes and sweeping. Uh, and then Michelle says sometimes all five daily activities don't happen. Well, that's okay. That can happen sometimes. But here's the thing. You want to think about what you can reasonably accomplish in one day because the purpose is not to see how much you can do, but the purpose is to be productive, reasonably productive, and you don't want to overwhelm or to exhaust yourself. So then tip number two is going to be to be consistent. So tip number one, and I'm going to put that here in the screen. So tip number one was to be realistic. So tip number one was to be realistic. And that is from after you decide all of the different little things that need to happen in the house, then the next thing you're going to want to do is to set priorities on what needs to happen every day, what needs to happen every week, every month, and then seasonally. So that's how you want to go about it. So what do you need to do every day? And I showed you guys a list of the daily activities that I have. I Those things are, are things that I need to do every day. Michelle from My Everyday Wife Life gave you a list of her top five daily activities, but she said they don't always get done. So what happens when they don't get done? Well, you just start all over on the next day. There's no getting behind and there's no catching up. You just start where you are on the next day. So tip number one is to be realistic. And then tip number two is to be consistent. So how are you consistent? Well, first of all, you want to make sure that you, once you decide what are the activities that you need to do every day, not what I need to do every day or what I think you should do every day, but what are the activities that you've decided you need to do every day to maintain your home? 
make a list. Write them down in a little journal or in a notebook. I have what, in this little binder right here, I have what I call my control journal because I follow the Fly Lady, the Fly Lady cleaning system and we are encouraged to create a control journal. And then in that control journal, I have a list of things that I'm going to do every day in my morning routine. And then I also have a list of things that I need to do every day in my after dinner routine. Because that's the thing with the Fly Lady Cleaning System. It's a series of routines that you use to manage your home. But you don't have to follow Fly Lady to create a series of routines to manage your home. So what are some of the things that I have on this morning routine? Well, workout. First thing is workout. And then brush my teeth, wash my face, moisturize, you know, hit the bathroom, do all those things. Take any kind of before breakfast meds I need to do. Get dressed, makeup. Uh, then put away the dishes from the dishwasher. So I unload the dishwasher, uh, have breakfast, and then review my planner to see whatever it is that I need to do for the day. Clean up the after breakfast dishes, do my daily swish and swipe, wipe out the kitchen sink, do my daily swish and swipe, fill the bird feeders, water my flowers, start the laundry, and review my checklist. So now, this is my checklist but what I need to do every morning. This is my checklist for what I need to do after dinner. I have a checklist for what I need to do before I go to bed, such as make sure the living room is picked up and tidied up, clear the counters in the kitchen, shine my sink, lay out a fresh dishcloth and dish towel, run the dishwasher so that when I get up in the morning, I can unload it and the dishwasher is ready to receive dishes throughout the day. Uh, then gather things that I need uh, for the next day. So for you working moms, you're going to have your, your um, kids' book bags and all those things packed and sitting by the door. Their clothes are going to be laid out. Their lunches are going to be made and in the refrigerator unless you're going to get up early in the morning to do those things. And you're going to put out, you know, get on your pajamas put out whatever you're going to wear the next day. And then again, I'm going to review my checklist. So I got that at the bottom right here, review checklist. So I've got a series of things that, I, that I'm going to do for my daily routine. And then I also have things in here that I need to do for my weekly plan. So now let me just look real quick to see what people are asking. Um, Let's see. So Tammy said she's writing all this down. And Tammy, I'm glad you are because, you know, like I said, I wish I had learned these things earlier. And it really does make a difference. And I'll try to be sure to re, um, re, to um, summarize this at the end. And if I forget to summarize it, somebody remind me and I'll try to do that. OK, so Michelle said she needs to work on her consistency. Um, Oh my goodness, Hustle Hard Mom says she tries to plan meals at least for two weeks at a time. That is amazing. That is really good. If you can plan meals out for two weeks at a time, then when you check your planner the night before, you know what you're cooking the next day. You can just put it in the fridge so they can be thawing out, that kind of thing. And it just kind of helps you feel more relaxed, more in control, and more confident. So, okay, so, but those are some things that I wanted to just share with you guys in my control journal. So now let me just set it aside. And um, let's see. So the other thing that I want you to think about when it comes to being consistent, you've decided what it is you need to do every day. You've made a list of those things. And you put those things that need to be done in your it, on a list. And then you've decided what needs to be done daily, what needs to be done weekly, what needs to be done monthly, and then what needs to be done seasonally. Those are all the things you're going to plan. And then once you decide what needs to be done daily, then you have to decide, well, when is the best time to do it? You have to think about, well, what kind of person are you? Me, I'm a morning person. 
If I don't get it done first thing in the morning, it's probably not going to happen. I wake up like the Energizer Bunny. I pop out of bed. I put an LG. I'm ready to go. But come eight o'clock at night, I'm like, because I'm winding down around 6.30 or 7 o'clock. So, so these are things that I know about myself. So since I know this about myself, I plan to get my tasks done first thing in the morning. So I get up, I hit the yoga mat, and then I unload the dishwasher, I start my laundry, and then I start doing whatever it is that I'm going to do on the list that day. By 10.30 or 11 o'clock, I want everything that I need to have done in the house done. However, if you're a working mom, that may not work for you. I'm retired now, so I don't have to worry about getting things done before I leave the house. But for you working moms, you may need to get up an hour or so earlier than your family so that you can get some things accomplished before they get up. Or you may need to decide what you can do each day. Just a little one something you can do each day. So you're going to have a weekly plan that's going to tell you what you're going to do each day and then what you're going to do on Saturday. Because you're going to spend more time on Saturday cleaning and managing your home than I am because I'm going to have that stuff done by Friday so I can spend Saturday relaxing and enjoying myself and making YouTube videos. If you're a working mom, that's not going to work for you. But one of the important things with a working mom, and mom is the key word, is that you have little ones and little ones generate laundry like I don't know what. So I would do a load of laundry every day. You can either do a load, throw a load in when you get up in the morning, uh, start your some of your daily routine. You could do your daily swish and swipe before the kids get up and then they hit the bathrooms. You get them dressed. You guys leave the house when you come in from work. You take the laundry out of the wash and you throw it in the dryer while you're getting dinner ready. It's drying. And then after dinner, you as a family can sit down and fold up those clothes and get them put, put away because the laundry's not done until they're folded and put away. Having them dry and sitting in the dryer is not being done. You got to fold them up and get them put away. But your family can help you do that. And if you do one load a day, come Saturday, either your laundry's all done or you won't have as much to do. Now, there was a question somewhere in there. Let me back up for a second and try to find it. Um, let's see. Um, I got a blue sky. Send it to me on my. Because I must have missed it. So, OK. So the question was, do I ever get tired of my routines? No, not really. And I don't get tired of the routines because the routines help me stay on top of things. The routines help me feel in control. And see, here's the thing about a routine. You don't have to think about it. You just get up and you just do it. You just get up and you just go. You don't have to think about it. That's the important thing about a routine. Now, do I just love, love, love cleaning? Not necessarily. There are plenty of other things that I can do than cleaning. But here's the thing. The house has got to get clean. And if I'm not leading that charge, it's not going to happen. Now, there's me and the hubby here. And he will help me clean. But he will also um, sit in his chair and watch TV and make his fly ties and do all kinds of things. And the stuff can pile up all around him and he doesn't see it unless I say, honey, why don't we, you know, blah, blah, blah. And of course, oh yeah, babe, sure. Let's take care of it. So again, in your own home, your kids won't see it. It can pile up and be up to their knees and they won't see it until mom says, okay, it's time to tidy up. So when you say, do I get tired of the routine? No. Now, can I come up with a better routine? Hey, I'm not married to this routine. If I can come up with something better, I'm open. So Harmony, what you want to do is to come up with what works for you. So Michelle says she's always changing things up because she gets tired of her routines. And that's fine. If you know that you're one who gets tired of your routine, so then change it up. Maybe instead of doing laundry every Monday and Tuesday, next time you're going to switch it around to laundry every day. Or maybe you'll switch it around to doing something else. So, so that's just up to you. 
So now Benita Hopkins says sometimes her energy level wavers, which affects her cooking patterns. She's she um, she's a late afternoon and a night person. And you know what, Benita, that's OK. I'm a morning person, so I know that I got to get things done in the morning, but I can't cook dinner in the morning. Well, I guess I could, but I don't. But if you know that your energy um is better in the late afternoon and in the evening, then you would want to have your cleaning routines in the evening. So whereas in the morning you get up, you have a leisurely cup of coffee, you and your significant other or your family have breakfast or whatever. And then you plan what you can do in the late afternoon and what you want to do at night. You get to decide, but you have to look at yourself so that you know. And once you know what your pattern is, put that on your calendar, Put it in your Alexa and just try to be consistent with that. Um, so take me to Tammy's house. And I believe her name is Tammy says she needs to start earlier. And Tammy, you just might. Now, my daughter is one of those um, type A personalities that is like, go, 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 go. Stuff to do all day long. She's always busy. She gets up at four o'clock sometimes, 4.30 in the morning so that she can have some quiet time before the rest of the family gets up so that she can either pray or meditate or do some personal development reading before they get up. So she has that time blacked out for herself. Then there might be some things around the house that she might do that she jumps in the shower, gets herself ready for her work day. The family's up, moving around, that kind of thing. If you need to start earlier, start earlier. I got to tell you guys, last night for the first time in a very long time, I went to bed early. I, I was just tired. So I went to bed about nine o'clock, you know, and I go to bed most times with my iPad and I'll be looking at video or I'll have a book to read. And next thing I know, I am out like a light. My husband came upstairs a couple of hours later. I don't know what he said to me. I, I didn't have a clue. But I woke up this morning and I felt so refreshed because I had gone to bed early. The past few nights, I'd been staying up late, binge watching a couple of movies or a couple of shows that I found on uh, Netflix. So I was tired when I got up the next morning and I got my things done, but I was dragging because, you know, I'm up at stay up till one o'clock watching something on TV. And then I'm up at seven or seven thirty. You know, that affects my energy level. So, Sandy, if you need to get up earlier, get up earlier. It's OK to do that. Let's see. I got another comment. I got to find it. Um, let's see. By Evelyn Mitchell. And she says uh, she's new to my channel and she really enjoys listening to me that I'm very helpful. And she's in the process of reorganizing her kitchen. Oh, thank you. I appreciate that. That is so nice of you guys to say that. And I don't see it on here where she said it. I was looking at my iPad and. Um, Let's see. Hustle One Hard Mom says she gets individual label baskets for the kids' rooms, and they each have their assigned laundry day to do their own laundry, which helps her out. So that means your kids are a little older. They're at least nine years old. And I have one person that I used to be in the PTA with, and she said she taught all her kids how to do laundry when they turned nine. They learned how to operate the washer and dryer, and they did their own laundry. So you can get help in that way, but certainly they can learn to do their own clothes and they have their own day to do their own laundry. That's a great way to help yourself out in that regard. Um, let's see. Sandy said it's all about being organized. It's very tiresome, but you have to stay on it no matter what. Uh, so that you don't get behind and then become overwhelmed. Now, Sandy, the one thing that I try to emphasize is that there is no behind. It's you just start where you are. So unless you're thinking behind, meaning that if you don't get the laundry started today, then you're going to have more laundry tomorrow. And if you've got little ones, you're going to have Mount Washmore if you don't try to stay on top of the laundry. That's why I encourage one load a day 
every day except for Sunday um, so that you can get your laundry done. And with it just being two of us here, if I do one load a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday, I'm done with laundry by Thursday and sometimes by Wednesday, depending upon the season of the year. Now, if it's late spring and then summer and early fall, then my husband generates as much laundry as a two-year-old because then he's out fishing, he's doing yard work and all that kind of stuff. So he's using up a lot more clothes. But like right now in the winter time and he's not working, I don't have as much laundry, but it is seasonal for me. So I have to try to stay on top of that. Um, but yeah, you, you know, it, being a homemaker, is one of those jobs you do because you love your family and you want to give to your family. You want them to live in a clean and cozy space and you want to create a comfortable, cozy space for you and your family. That's what being a homemaker is. But part of it involved in homemaking is the home keeping. So the home keeping and the maintenance of what it is you do is equally as important as the warm and cozy feeling that you bring to your house. And it's not something that's fun unless you try to make it fun. So if your kids are helping you clean or something like that, maybe put on music. Or if it's just you, when I'm cooking or cleaning or something like that, depending upon what I'm doing and I can hear, I'll put on a, an audio book or I'll put on some music and I can listen to things while I'm chopping those carrots or while I'm washing dishes or folding laundry. So you want to be organized and you want it to do the things you need to do when you have your best energy level, but you've also got to be consistent. So one of the things that I will do is like on um, Sunday uh, when I'm sitting down and I'm looking at my planner, because that's one of the things that I do on Sunday afternoon is if I'm working in zone two, which is the kitchen, um, then I will choose four things in zone two that I need to do this week. And I will put them on my calendar. And when you guys saw, uh, let me just share my screen again real quick. Uh, let me find this over here first. Yeah, okay. So I'm going to share this. So when you see here that I've got, these are the things that I'm going to do each day for my weekly task. I'm, my weekly home blessing is Monday, which includes stripping my bed, uh, putting the linen, uh, the sheets and towels into the wash. And then I'm going to vacuum. Well, I'm going to sweep the floors that need to be swept, vacuum the floors in the main traffic patterns, wherever I have carpet in the house, mop the kitchen and the bathroom floors. Usually my husband will mop those instead of me, but I will do it sometimes. Um, empty all the little trash cans and then wipe down all the mirrors in the house, like the, the mirror down in the hallway and uh, maybe some of your decorative mirrors because you're doing your daily switch and swipe in the bathroom, which I'll explain what that means in, in a minute. And that's already done. But then if there's some special things that I'm doing, like a like my four zone things, maybe in my zone cleaning for the kitchen, I'm going to clean the um, clean out the microwave. So I might decide, well, I'm going to clean the microwave on Wednesday because on the day that I do my weekly home blessing, I find that by the time I'm done with that, I am tired. So after I've done my daily switch and swipe, my weekly home blessing, I'm not going to and I throw a load of laundry in. I'm not going to add another task that day, but you might have enough energy to do that. But then on Wednesday, which is my plan and desk day, which is the day that I'm paying my bills and I'm going to clean out my refrigerator because I'm also making my grocery list so that I can order groceries on the next day. Uh, I'm going to file any papers that I need to file, that kind of thing. Maybe that's the day that I'm going to put down, clean the microwave. And then maybe on Thursday, I might say, well, I need to... Uh, clean out my washer and dryer. So I might put that on that day and maybe um, um, organize the pantry in the kit, the uh, laundry, not the laundry pantry, but the uh, 
cup and glass cabinet might be something else that I might do. But I'll choose four things that need doing. Oh, I noticed something yesterday that I hadn't done for a while and I had overlooked it. Cleaning the hood over the oven. I was cleaning off the stove top and the back of the stove and happened to look up and I'm like, oh, this hood up here is, you know, it's like it's kind of greasy. I need to tackle that. So I put it on the list of things to do. Not right then, but the next time I work in zone two, that's going to be on the list of one of the four things for me to do that day. So there I'll have some monthly activities that I might be doing and then as well as some zone cleaning and that kind of thing. So now let me stop sharing that. So I feel like I got off target there. Um, let's make sure I'm getting everything. So we talked about energy level. We talked about Tammy needing to start earlier. So now Blue Skies talks about wanting to be an early morning person, but... She has difficulty mastering that. When people get up early and there is like an early morning thing, there's a whole system of people that get up early to have an early morning routine. It does help your day go better and smoother if you get started sooner in the day. But being an early morning person doesn't mean you have to get up at 5 a.m. It might mean that you get up at 7.30 or you get up at 8 a.m. or you get up at 9 a.m. and you get up and you get your day started. So when I say I'm a morning person, I'm one of those morning persons that like to wake up about 7 o'clock and then get up and get the day going. But you don't have to be that kind of person. 9 o'clock is a good time to get up and get things started as well. Uh, let's see. What else am I missing? We got that one. Uh, and I do my own cleaning in this house. There's nobody here but me and the hubby. So, I mean, he will help clean. But when we grew up, you know, we're old school and I'm, you know, we're trying to be a little bit more modern, but for the most part, we're old school. So in my household, when I grew up, the men took out the garbage and mopped the floors. We didn't mop floors. Mom said that mopping a floor was too heavy for a woman. And, you know, back then you had those ring mops. You had to put them in a bucket and then wring them out with your hand, that kind of thing. So the men and my brother, my dad and my brother mopped the floors and took out the garbage. I will admit it irked me that all my brother had to do was take out the garbage and mop the floors. But in my husband's family, the same thing. The girls did all the cooking, the cleaning, that kind of thing. And he has six brothers. There were three girls and then seven boys. He had six brothers. The girls did the cooking and the cleaning, the laundry, all that. The boys took out the garbage and mopped the floors. So I will tell you that one of the ladies asked me about my floor routine. I'm like, well, I really didn't have a mopping routine because I never mopped the floors. He always mops the floors. But now as part of some of my daily stuff, I got a Swiffer. And I can mop the floors pretty easily, pretty quickly. And the interesting thing is like on the weekly home blessing, when I want to get the bathroom floors wiped up and I can do it real quick with the Swiffer or something like that, he'll be like, well, why are you doing my job? But I can do it quickly with that. I'm not using that other big mop, which he will sometimes still use. He doesn't use the Swiffer. He likes to get that big mop out, but he's got some kind of little thing. You put it in and it squeezes out the, the you know, the mop head and that kind of thing. But But there we go. Um, let's see. Oh, here is Evelyn's comment. She's new to my channel and she enjoys listening. I am so glad you do. Um, she's in the process of reorganization of her house and kitchen. And ladies, right now is the time to do that. January, February, March, April is like spring cleaning month. So you kind of get started with decluttering in January and February because you can't clean clutter and you can't organize clutter. So you start decluttering in January and February and then in March and April, you can do some spring cleaning. So let's see. Uh, so Tammy says, well, let me go back up. So Clinkies has made herself a cleaning cart, which is good. Then you can take the cart from room to room as you go. I've got a couple cleaning caddies with things in it, and I go from room to room with that. That's very helpful. 
And then um, Michelle at My Everyday Wife Life has weekly chores are clean the bathroom, vacuum, mop, dust, declutter, deep clean as they happen throughout the week. And oh my goodness, she's in her apron. Oh my goodness, guys, this is Kimmy from She's in Her Apron. I have been following her for a very long time and we both like Fly Lady Cat. Don't you think Fly Lady Cat is the best Fly Lady mentor? I am so pleased that you joined me. And so Kimmy says she gets up at 7 a.m. and literally stays in bed until 8 a.m. to wake up. And then she's up and moving. It takes her that long to wake up. You know, Kimmy, now that I've gotten a little older, I'll still wake up. Um, at like 7, 7.30, and I might lay there for about 15 or 20 minutes. You know, I'll just kind of like stretch a little bit, and then I'll relax, and then I'll kind of think about what it is it that I need to do, and then I'll say, okay, this body's not going to exercise itself, so then I'll get up, and I'll put on my yoga clothes, and I typically will lay my yoga outfit out the night before. I usually have it over there where those aprons are, and then I'll get up in the morning, come in here, get my yoga clothes on, go out and hit the mat, or I'm not out, downstairs in the living room and I hit the mat. And then once I'm done with that, I just kind of get started on the task that I have for today. But oh my goodness, thank you so much for joining me, guys. She has a great channel. And yes, Kat is an angel. So Michelle says a cleaning cart works pretty good for her. And then she's got a caddy in the bonus room over the garage. I've got two floors. So I have a caddy upstairs and a caddy downstairs. And the one upstairs I take from room to room. And Tanya is new here. Tanya, I am so glad you've joined me tonight. So, okay, let me make sure that I'm getting all the notes covered, guys, because I... um. I, I kind of had some specific notes that I wanted to cover. So let's make time to do that. So again, one of the things that I want you guys to think about is pick the time that works best for you to do your thing. For me, it's first thing in the morning. But if it doesn't happen, you know, by if it's not done by three o'clock, it won't happen. And it could be because when I was a stay at home from mom, my husband used to be home, get home from work around three thirty or four o'clock. He taught middle school art. So. Uh, and I'd be home with the twins. And so I would be doing whatever I was doing around the house, that kind of thing. But when he came in, I didn't do any more work. You know, we would sit down, enjoy some family time, that kind of thing. So I just kind of trained myself to be like, OK, four o'clock is quitting time. <clears throat> OK, so again, be consistent, but you can be consistent by choosing the time that works for you. And then also you want to be realistic, which was tip number one in the amount of things you can reasonably accomplish in a day. And then um, give yourself a block of time to do it. So don't say, well, at eight o'clock, I'm going to do this. And at 815, I'm going to do this. And at 830, I'm going to do this. No, give yourself a block of time. Like I might say, OK, between eight and ten or 8 and 10 30, I'm going to have my morning routine completed. And definitely by 11 o'clock, I don't want to have to do anything else in the house. I want to be done with that. So if I want to read, if I want to sew, if I want to do YouTube, I've got the time to do that. So there's that. Um, okay. And then number three, tip number three is to be flexible. So tip number three is to be flexible. So now I just talked. To, oh, wait a minute. I missed that. Where is that? Uh, there we go. Tip number three is to be flexible. And even though I just talked about being realistic and being consistent and all that kind of thing, you've got to be flexible because life happens, particularly if you're a young mom with with very young children, especially a baby, then your time isn't necessarily your own. So you're going to have to be flexible. But the big thing is don't worry about being behind or getting behind. It's just a matter of doing what you can do on that day. And then the next day, start that routine and just do what you can do on that day. If on Monday, you normally dust, and on Monday, the kids were sick, you had this, you had that, and you weren't able to get any dusting, then you don't worry about dusting until 
Monday of next week. So that's what I mean by there's no behind. And just kind of think, you say, well, gosh, if I don't dust for a whole week, but if you haven't been maintaining that consistent routine so far, what is one more week going to matter? And then here's the other thing. When life happens, and it invariably will, then you don't have to worry about things being away from you. I'll give you a real good example. I had a um, little bit of a, a heart flutter one day, and so we had to call the EMT. So when the medics came out, and my husband gets really nervous when he has to like call you know, the EMS or anything like that because he just doesn't know what to do. And so... You know, they were asking me questions about, well, where's your list of medications and this kind of thing? Well, you know, I couldn't really give them a list of what I was on. But I said, just go in the bathroom. They're in a basket underneath the sink. And my husband was too much of a nervous wreck to be able to even tell them where to go. So the fireman went in there, opened the cabinet, and I didn't worry about him opening that cabinet and stuff falling out or him not being able to find what he needed. He was able to go in there and open the door and pick up the basket where I had all the bottles of medication that I take and bring them in and make a list. So that's what I mean by staying on top of things and you know maintaining your routines. They give you confidence that, so that when something happens, you don't have to oh my God, I don't want him to open that door. I didn't have to worry about that. And then needless to say, no routines got done that day. It was a couple of days before I really got back to feeling up to taking care of things in the house. But the house wasn't a hot mess because I had been on top of things every day. So now Michelle said she does zone cleaning only three times a week so she can do errands, yard work, et cetera, in the other days. Well, you know, Thursdays, is the day that I've got for Aaron Day on the Fly Lady Cleaning System. We do Aaron Day on Thursday. So like today was Thursday, Aaron Day. So on Thursdays, I go get my hair done. Yes, today I went. So Thursday, I get my hair done. Then I go by the post office and check the post office box. I go to Target and pick up toilet paper and paper towels and napkins because they have a certain kind that I like. And if I'm going to go to Joann's or anywhere else, I'm going to do that on Thursday. Stop by the library, return my library books. And then I place my grocery order on Thursday morning. And so either I'll get a pickup on Thursday or I get a delivery on Thursday. So when I come home, then I got to get my groceries and that kind of thing put away. If it's spring and summer and I'm gardening, then that means when I get up first thing, I'm going to be outside doing my, well, I'm going to do my daily swish and swipe first. And then I'm going to head outside and get my gardening done. So it could be, and I'm also going to get my laundry started. But it might be that some of the other cleaning that I don't that I do during the week may or may not get done. Yeah, you don't have to be rigid, but you do need to be flexible. You do need to be flexible because the light happens. And the other thing is, if you have, uh, say, chronic health conditions or something like that, if you try to do what you have determined you should do in your home each day. And check them off on your list. Like I showed you guys, you know, you can make a list and then check them off. Then on the days that you're confined to bed, you don't have to worry about the house being a hot mess. Okay. And then Hustle Hard Mom, tell me your name. We typically know each other's names over here. So if you don't mind telling us what your name is. But uh, yes, uh, when you've got little ones, flexibility is a must. And if your youngest one is a year old or, you know, like under two, you definitely have to be at their disposal. So, yes. Um, beautiful Rachel says, uh, am I missing part of it? Oh, okay, there we go. Beautiful Rachel says she homeschools now. Kids are 12, 10, and 9, and she's trying to expect more house chores from them. So she put a schedule in clear folders for good idea. Clear schedule. We're going to have to give her three snaps for that. She puts a schedule in clear folders with dry erase, um, and she uses a dry erase marker for checkoffs. And she also follows the Fly Lady cleaning routine. I like Fly Lady Cat. If, if you haven't checked out Fly Lady Cat, Rachel, do check her out. She's the best Fly Lady. There are others, but I'm biased. I like Fly Lady Cat. But yes, this really helps. And yes, your kids can help with tours around the house. And then there was something else. 
She follows the fly lady's basic weekly plan. She said she was sick for two months. So the only thing she did was food and clean clothes. And she was lucky to get up and shower, but she's finally feeling better. Rachel, that's the thing. The priority is you and the family. So if you're ill and you can barely get out of bed, you know, but you still have to make meals and take care of your children, that's where you are. You just cook have to keep up with the dishes so that you can continue to cook and you got to keep up with the laundry. The rest of the house can wait. Nobody's coming over to do the white glove test. And if they do, you can show them the door. Other than that, let it go until you're feeling better. And then when you're feeling better, get on the routine and go from there. So, yes. Um, so Vin says he keeps prescription list in his phone under his doctor's contact entry. Well, you know, Vin, that's that's probably a good idea. But just to share with you guys another story, I got a new phone one day. I just got a new phone, left the phone place because I had gone there with my husband and we he we got a new phone and he went one way, I went the other. I left there, went over to Target out in a way on the other end of town. I had another little heart flutter. And they end up having to call um, the EMS for me. And they wanted me, you know, to figure out how to call my husband. Well, I had the new phone, didn't know how to work it. I says, I don't know how to work this new phone. I just got it like literally minutes ago and I couldn't figure out what to do, you know. So, so yeah, but, but I don't have a list in my phone and that's probably a good idea. But I did have, you know, like everything in a little basket right there where it's easily accessible. But okay, let's see. So hustle mom, but you were going to be telling us what your name is. So we're looking for that. Rachel, I'm glad you're feeling better. Jenny, <laughs> Jenny's laughing because yeah, I, got, I get my hair done every Thursday. And that's why I, it's typically pretty curly the first day. And then each day, you know, it gets a little bit looser. So by Saturday, they're nice and loose and then it looks right. But you know. Michelle says she don't have the energy for zone cleaning and errands or yard work. I get it. So you have to schedule things the way you need to schedule them. Zone cleaning works the way you want it to work. You don't have to choose Fly Lady system. You make the system work for you. And like for myself now, I was talking to Fly Lady Cat just the other day and I said, you know, I don't have the energy to get all of the weekly home blessing done on Monday. Now I split it up and I'll do half on Monday and half on Tuesday, or instead of doing the floors, sometimes I'll get my husband to do them. And he normally will do the floors, but when I'm doing the weekly home blessing, sometimes I just want to get out that little Swiffer and just get done. Particularly if I'm doing a video and I'm showing the weekly home blessing, then I need to show that part too. And so I'll get out that little Swiffer. But I tell you what, I'm exhausted when I'm when I get it done. Okay, so Hustle Heart Mom is Candace. Okay, got ladies, say hi to Candace. Hustle Heart Mom is Candace. And then, okay, so good. So virtual hug. So Rachel said, yes, that's the only one. Oh, you're a Patreon. Okay, I like, I definitely like Fly Lady Cat. So yes. Michelle, you're doing the right thing. You develop a tool, a system, a routine that works for you. That's what you do. Yes, she can be found now on A Better Life with Fly Lady Cat. That's the new thing. And they have different zone cleaners on, on YouTube. And hey, guys, look at here. One of my sisters jumped on. Levina Stewart is my sister. This is the first time she's jumped on this particular show. Welcome, sis. I'm glad to have you here. Uh, so guys, say hi to my sis. Oh, Candace said she's been watching me live for a while. This is the first time she's catching me live. Well, Candace, I'm going to try to start doing these homemaking lives every Thursday at 745. A few of my viewers have been asking. So I'm trying to come up with content to give you guys good value. So I'm hoping I've told you guys how to um, create a routine. I think I've gone through all of the notes. So if I've forgotten some, yeah, I have gone through all the notes. And I do have a bonus tip. Uh, let me. The bonus tip is to have fun. 
The bonus tip is to have fun. Now, how can you have fun with all this cleaning and cooking and whatever? Well, play some music, listen to an audio book or something like that. Do something to help you enjoy yourself while you're doing your thing. So let's see. So Blue Skies and um, Michelle are talking about how, and Blue Skies is Mickey. So Mickey and Michelle are talking about how they each struggle with being able to get their things done in a day because of some chronic things they struggle with. So I get that. Um, so Rachel says, on car and purse day, um, it's a nice reminder to check oil, windshield fluid, and gas. You know, that's a good idea. Now, my husband will clean my car because he's always cleaning the cars in the family. So he'll clean the car, take it to the wash or whatever. If I got any trash in there, he'll clean it out. But to check the root, the windshield wiper fluid and gas, that's a good idea. And sometimes he'll say, do you have any gas in your car? And usually, uh, it used to always be no. Now I keep it pretty much full and I don't go anywhere. So there's always gas in the car, but yeah. But yes, my husband helps on car and purse day. I'll do the purse and he'll do the car. And Libby, hi Libby, good to have you with us. See, so Rachel is talking to Mickey. Thank you, Rachel, I appreciate that. Okay, so Clinky B, Clink B900, what is your name? And VMJ, what is your name? So tell us what your names are. Okay, so now we've got some people that jumped on late. So now let me give a quick recap. So three tips for how to create a routine. Number one is to be realistic, meaning to plan the things that you can realistically do in a day, in a morning for the energy level that you have. So what that means is take a look around, look at all the different things that needs doing in your house, make a list, and then decide when you can get those things done in a week. Or you can borrow somebody else's routine. Uh, fly Lady Cat, you know, the Fly Lady cleaning system is one that I like and it's worked for me. You can borrow her routine and tweak it. There are other YouTube people who have clean routines. Michelle said she's created her own cleaning routine. Michelle is at My Everyday Wife Life, and she definitely has a routine that she does each week. You know, if you go to her channel, you can click on it, and she shares some of the printables about the way she does things. So be sure to do that. I should probably think about doing that, too, but I haven't done it yet. So, But Michelle definitely has printables, and she's the one at My Everyday Wife Life. If you're looking for a routine or whatever, check out hers and see what she has. Or you can look at the routine the way I uh, shared it with you or come up with your own. Uh, tip number two was to be consistent. And how can you do that? Well, write it down, put it on a list. And then one of the ladies gave us a real good idea. She put the list inside a piece of plastic and then you can check things off with a dry erase marker so you can keep track of your list. Use your planner. And my planner is right here. And... One of the things that I'll do is like I'll use my planner and I'll put like over here will be the things I'm going to do in the house. Over here will be family appointments. And then the things I'm going to do in the house on Monday, weekly home blessing. And then on Tuesday, free day. And then here on Wednesday, planning. On Thursday, I'm going to run errands. And then over here, I might have a list of other things that I need to do. So those are some things that um, that I do to keep myself on track. If you guys want me to, to show you more about how I use my planner, let me know and I'll try to create a video on that. Uh, let's see, though, who's Keisha? I missed that. Okay, Michelle says I should make printables. I'll do that. I have not done it yet, but Michelle, who is here on My Everyday Wife Life, she has printables. So you guys should definitely check her out and I will create some. Um, I'll do that soon. But right now I'm in the process of creating my uh, apron, uh, launching my apron shop, the Apron Diva. And I'm working on those things. So printables probably won't be happening soon. And um, but I do want to let you guys know about my apron shop, the Apron Diva. And 
if you want to find out more about it, um, I've got a link in the description box that you can sign up on so that you can be on the email list so that when I'm ready to launch, you get your you get the information. And then Keisha is, oh, Clinky. That's who Keisha is. Okay. So Clinky, this is Keisha. So hi, Keisha. I got to write that down so that I can remember. That's Keisha. And Candace is Heart Hustle Mom. I'm writing that down so that I can remember it. And then uh, Rachel says she'll add a block schedule to the three-layer cake in the planner. I know what you're talking about when you talk about that three-layer cake. Yes, add a block schedule in there. And uh, let's see, Vaughn. Who's Vaughn? Oh, VM is Vaughn. VM is Vaughn. And I know you guys probably um, are on a lot of other shows, and we don't ask that. But you know what? For this, this community of women, we like to call each other by by our names. It just kind of helps to create community. So you feel comfortable here. Oh, and Levina says she's so excited about my apron shop. I am too. I was out looking at some things today and just kind of working on stuff. So I'm really excited about it. And I really enjoy a pretty apron. Not only are they pretty and practical, but they are also functional. So guys, please sign up in the description box um, for um the email list. And then uh, Mickey wants me to please show how to use my planner. So I will come up with a video to do that as well. So, okay. So what questions do you guys have? I think I've answered quite a few as we moved along, but um, I don't think I've missed any. Uh, so what other questions do what questions do you guys have? And while you guys are putting your questions in, um, let's see. See if I've missed any. So, um, Evelyn said she can't wait to until, you know, my apron line is available. And that's exactly my my plan is to try to have everything ready by the middle of April so that people can order aprons for Mother's Day and that kind of thing. That's my whole thing. So I'm going to um, to just go ahead and say that this live stream is brought to you by um, the Apron Diva. And that's the name of my shop. Apron Diva. And, oh, I guess I should spell, right? And the um, link you can sign up on is aprondiva.com. That's one, you can kind of go there, um, aprondiva.com, and a list will pop up that you can sign up there. Or you can use the list in the description box. And I am the Apron Diva. I know I'm being silly now. Sorry, you guys. But I did want to say that this live stream is brought to you by the Apron Diva, my very own apron shop, which I'm launching shortly. So now I want to ask you this question, though. How do you manage your home? Do you have a series of routines to help you stay on top of things or do you let the day lead you and then end up doing crisis cleaning? Tell me in the comment section, because here's the thing. If you stay on top of things when a crisis occurs and you have to let things go that day, you're still in control of what's going on in your house. You're not overwhelmed. And for my young homemakers, so often they get overwhelmed because they don't know where to start. So if you're a new homemaker, particularly if you've just had a new baby and now you're home for the first time, or let's say because of COVID, you've lost your job and now you're home. Well, regardless of how you got there, you are now a full-time stay-at-home mom or homemaker. And you might also be doing homeschooling and a whole lot of other things along with that. So 
So what you want to do really, especially if you've got all that going on, plus homeschooling, you're really going to need to be uh, proactive and come up with a routine that works for you. And notice the key there is a routine that works for you. Now, the Fly Lady cleaning system works for me. But Michelle said it doesn't work for her because it was too confusing. I think Fly Lady Cat makes it less confusing. So that's why I like it. Um, but there are other ways to create your routines. Do what you want. I know Jordan Page at um, Fun, Cheaper, Free, she does block scheduling because that's what works best for her. So think about that. So Sylvia at Silly Mommy for Life. Hello, Sylvia. I haven't seen you for a while. It is good to have you here. You've got to recollect your routine. Either recollect your routine, Sylvia, or create a new one. You get to do that. You get to decide. And it's nice to have you here. And I believe Sylvia is correct, right? If I'm wrong, let me know. So Libby says there's daily tasks, there's twice a week tasks, twice a month tasks, and then monthly tasks, quarterly tasks, twice a year. Put it on the online calendar for reminders, not the daily. Yes, that's a good idea. You can use a planner such as this one. And notice I got my, my name on it. Blue Skies has one of those little cricket things and she can make those kind of things. So I got an N. Um, so there's that. Um, you can use the online planners. You can use your phone, uh, you know, digital things. You can create a spreadsheet. There's all kinds of ways that you can set up a calendar to have that routine work for you. So, okay. So, so uh, Keisha, I think that's right. Keisha asked me, what made me decide to start a channel? You know, Keisha, you're going to laugh at this, but... I started a channel about three or four years ago and I started you know, makeup. It was called Makeup on Aisle 64. And I just thought it was fun. I I had um, just retired from work. Well, we hadn't retired yet. Well, I was getting ready to retire. I'm not sure. But I just thought it would be fun just to have a YouTube channel. So I started that and just to have fun. And after doing that for about a year, I thought, oh, this is somewhat limiting. And I wanted to talk about more than makeup. So I started the channel This and That with Denise Jordan. So I could talk about this and I could talk about that. And I tried a few different things. As I said, I just threw a lot of things against the wall to see what stuck. But what I found I really enjoyed doing was talking to young homemakers and helping them sort things out. I've managed a home for more than 45 years. So I've learned a few things along the way. And I really enjoy mentoring young women. Well, I have one daughter. And she lives in Tennessee. I'm in Indiana. So it's not like we get to see each other often. We talk almost every day, but she's not close. So she has two grand, two children. Well, they're in Tennessee. I'm here. I have a son who has two little girls, beautiful little girls, but they're in Georgia. I'm here. And then my other son, who has two daughters, you know, they're adults and that kind of thing. And they were, you know, they came into the family as a second marriage. You know, when he married their mom, they were already almost adults. So I've gotten to know them. But the relationship is just a little bit different, you know, because they came to me later in life. But I do enjoy. And then the one of them has a has two little ones. So I enjoy mentoring young women. So I started answering questions about homemaking. Didn't mean to, but I just started answering questions about homemaking and realized they enjoyed that. And I thought, I really like this. So I just kind of zigged and zagged and decided to start talking about homemaking for the most part. And that's what my people like, cooking, cleaning, laundry. I love cleaning. I love cooking. And I love laundry. And my sister, uh, Mickey Blue Skies is my sister. She's like, what do you like about laundry? I don't know. I love laundry. I like the smell of bleach. I like it when it comes out clean. And you guys know, you can tell I'm old school. So when I wash my husband's white shirts, you know, I don't want ring around the collar. I want them white, white. It's just fun. And whereas I used to try all kinds of different makeups and stuff like that, and I talk about them now, I like to try new laundry products. I just love to try new laundry products. So, so there's that. Uh, where was I? So, um...
We got Miss Fat One. Evelyn said that I'm the first person she's ever gotten on live. Well, I'm glad you started. So now Candace said she doesn't have a normal daily routine with so many young children at home and homeschooling. Life gets hectic. So she just makes a list and gets as much done as she can. And that's what works for her. So Candace, I might encourage you to consider trying to create a routine so that you can see what you need to have done on a daily, weekly, and monthly basis. I wouldn't worry so much about seasonal right now, but if you could think about what needs to be done daily, weekly, and monthly, and then create that routine and work it around your homeschooling. I was working with a client who also does homeschooling, and typically she would start homeschooling with her kids about 8.30, so and she got up at six and I suggested you might want to get up at five so you can get some things done before you get the kids up at seven. And then once they get their breakfast and they start in the schoolroom at eight thirty, then because uh, you're going to be in there with them, because if you're homeschooling, that means there's things that you have to do. And then when they take their first recess break, maybe you can sit down and have a cup of coffee, a cup of tea while they go out to play or whatever. But with that one year old. There's going to have naps off and on throughout the day, but still try to create a block schedule, not a pin me down time schedule, because with that many little ones, particularly under a certain age at home, it's going to be very difficult. Because like I said earlier, your time's not your own when you've got a baby. And then if you're homeschooling, that just adds another whole other dimension into the mix. Uh. So Mickey says she's trying to uh, plan better so that when she has migraines, then she's gotten, you know, things aren't absolutely totally crazy. And she does use her planner. So Mickey, how how do, helpful is the planner? Let people know whether or not that is helpful for you. And then um, Ben says, or rather Vaughn says, that she just lets the day lead her for the most part. And you know, Vaughn, that can work, uh, but then the time will come when it won't work. So I encourage you to, you be in control of your day. Create an, a, a routine so that you control the day as much as you can, so that when life happens, you're not totally overwhelmed because that's the thing about creating a routine is so that you're not overwhelmed so that you feel confident so that you feel in charge. Now, of course, life happens and you're not always in charge. I get that. But at least for the most things that kind of come our way, we can be in control. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's see. Oh, Sylvia, um, Hustle Hard Mom, her name is Candace, and she has four kids. So Sylvia, Hustle Hard Mom is Candace, and she has four little ones. Ha, huh. I help middle-aged homemakers too. Good. Uh, oh, five. Let's see. Did I? Hey, I missed some people. Okay, let me back up for a second. I'm sorry about that. Oh, I know Kimmy at She's in Her Apron. She follows Fly Lady Cat. And The Minimal Mom also is good to follow. Yes, I like The Minimal Mom too. Yes, and Do It On A Dime is nice too. And did I see somebody say they were expecting? Did I miss that? Oh, yes. Hustle Hard Mom. Candace says she's five. She has five and she's pregnant with baby number six. Well, congratulations. OK, so let's see. And I started this particular channel about two years ago, Bamsey. Um, oh, <laughs> Flower Patch School says she is over the snow. Tip, tell me, we got 11 inches and we finally got plowed out yesterday so we can leave the house today. But we're not in Texas. We have heat. We have water. We have power. I am not complaining. Oh, thank you, Michelle. I am so glad. Let's see. Uh, 
So, um, Miss Shaw Jim Dropper, Shaw Jim Dropper. Okay, Shaw said she's in desperate need of a routine. She has health issues and she's limited as to what she can do. Shaw, I understand that completely. When you have health issues, and we've got several people on who have chronic health conditions, and so they have to be careful or or is limited as to what they can do, then you have to decide what is most important. I'm having a little chill right now. The temperature is dropping outside, and I can tell because this office gets chilly when it starts to drop. But um, make a list of what is the most important things that need to happen, particularly the things that need to happen every day. So for me, every day, I do the daily swish and swipe. And I forgot to tell you guys what that is. So I'm going to put that in down here for my daily swish and swipe. And this is from the, the Fly Lady system. And, you know, if you guys feel like I'm talking about it ad nauseum, I'm sorry. This is just where I'm at. But I do a daily swish and swipe. Well, what does that mean? That means every day I wipe down the mirror, wipe out the sink in the bathroom, and then swish the toilet with some toilet bowl cleaner or a multi-purpose cleaner every day. Now, here's the thing. If something happens, like the day I had the heart flutter and we had to have the EMS out and they had to go in the bathroom to look for some stuff, I didn't worry about the bathroom being dirty because I clean it every day. So I knew it was ready. Now, is it like super, 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 super clean? You look in all the little corners? No. But the toilet bowl has been washed and switched out every day. The sink and the mirror has been cleaned every day. You can get in there and it's at least decent. And I do that in all three bathrooms every day. But if I have something pressing to do, I might hit the upstairs bathroom and I find I get tired more quickly now than I used to. I might not get to the downstairs bathroom. So that means tomorrow I'll try to do all three bathrooms, but I might start downstairs and work my way upstairs. So you just have to figure out what do you need to do? What's most important and get that done. Now, if you have a problem with low energy because of health conditions, then and if you know first thing in the morning is your best time, then do one or two things that are most important then. And then later on in the day, after you've had some rest and you've got a little more energy, you might do item number three and then be done. But you can't be trying to do all this stuff every day. And here's the other thing, ladies. We are not all 35. And every day I have to remind myself and my friend Mary at Mary's Nest, I'll say to her and I say, Mary, we are not 35. That means I don't have the energy that I had when I was 35. And not only am I not 35, I am not 45. So I do get tired from time to time. I don't have a chronic illness. You know, I mean, I've got a little heart condition, but it's managed with medication. So I don't count that. But some days I do get tired. So you have to figure out what's most important. On the days that I'm exhausted, I don't do the swish and swipe. It just don't happen. My husband's like, we don't have to have that done every day. And I certainly didn't do that every day when I was much younger and we survived. But what I do find is that if you, if I, you know, if you go too long without getting that done, then you start to get that rain grow around in your toilet bowl and that kind of thing. And, you know, I don't, I don't want that. Um, okay. So Alexandra says she just got here. She's 20 and within the next three to five years, <clears throat> hopes to be a full-time homemaker and a foster mom. Okay. So then Alexandria, what you want to be doing now is planning for the future as a full-time homemaker. So you want to be setting up routines now in your apartment, in your dorm room, at home, so that you, when you get into your own home, into your own space, you know how to, you've got a routine going that can help you manage things, but keep it in mind, you want it to be flexible so that if when life happens, you know, you can uh, zig when you need to zag. Uh, and so Shaw, uh, a planner, Mickey Blue Sky says, will also help you because there are times when if you don't get to the things that you had listed to do, 
then the next day you feel up to doing something, you just look on the list to see where you left off. So there's that. Uh, flower patch idea, flower patch school, flower patch, what's your name? I don't think we asked you, did we? I don't see it here. So flower patch, what is your name? We like to call each other's by our name here. So there's that. Rachel, get dressed to shoes. Yes, I do. Okay, let's see. So now um, Candace at Hard Hustle Mom, she likes the daily swish and swipe. And like I said, that's from the Fly Lady cleaning system. And if you guys listen to the history of Marla Silly, who is the Fly Lady, she's created this whole routine because she started out with some mental health issues. And when she was working with her therapist, there were some things that the therapist suggested that she do. And as she worked through, I think she was struggling with depression, but I'm not sure. But there was some mental health challenge she was experiencing. And as she worked through it, she began to see that creating these little routines were helpful. And that's how she came up with the Fly Lady Cleaning Method. She's got a very interesting story. But the daily swish and swipe really is. And if you've got boys in that group of five children, um, Candace, you definitely need to do the daily swish and swipe. Because we had two boys, you know, plus the hubby. And um, if you've got boys, you know, they can never hit that. The center of that toilet bowl is like a little spray all over. And boys are a challenge when it comes to cleaning. So just think about that. So, yeah, the daily switch and swipe can really be helpful. Now, and if you're getting your kids to help you with things, the other thing to think about is cleaning products. You don't always have to use like some kind of bonafide toilet bowl cleaner like Lysol or something like that or Clorox. You can use a multi-purpose cleaner. You can just use vinegar uh, and water, that kind of thing. You can try to pick some things that you think are best or, or child or environmentally friendly. So that's up to you. Uh, let's see. But yes, when on the fly lady cleaning system, you get up and you dress to shoes. No, house slippers do not count. So on the fly lady cleaning system, one of the things you do is when you get up, you get after you hit the bathroom, you get dressed to shoes, hard sole shoes, because she feels like dressing with shoes on puts you in a different frame of mind. When you put those shoes on, it means I'm getting ready to go to work. They can be shoes that tie up, like they can be gym shoes or sneakers, whatever you want to call them. Trainers, as they're called in different parts of the country. But bedroom slippers don't count. That's her thought. So there. Uh So Elle Fox says she's 41 and pretty tired and she's worried about this getting worse. So, well, it does get worse. Let me tell you, you do get more tired the older you get. But, you know, you have less responsibilities in some aspects the older you get, too. So, okay. Michelle said she has less energy at 56. She used to do a whole monthly house deep clean. She can't do it anymore. Yeah, you just have to adjust the routine. You just have to adjust the routine. Aha, Bamsey's 15 years old. She just celebrated her birth, just celebrated her birthday last year. Bamsey, I was thinking you were pretty young. I kind of got that impression. So Alexandra said she keeps a bathroom cleaner and cloth right under the bathroom sink. So it's right there. No excuse. You know, it's not too far. To OK, that's a good idea. You keep some cleaning products right in there. That'll help. Oh, let's see. And then Mary's life journey. Good idea. Switch and swap. She's got a boy and a husband. They hit it. They hit it in that big hole. Well, my boys, there just seems to always be a spray. You sit down. If they didn't put the seat down, you sit down and it's wet. Oh, used to drive me crazy. All right, Flower Patch, I never did get your name, but but yes, the daily swish and swipe is is good. 
Well, all right. Do you guys have any other questions? Otherwise, I think we should wrap this up. I don't want to just keep you guys on chatting. I believe when I do a live stream that there should be a purpose. And we've kind of met that. I think I've answered all the questions. So Kiana Lewis and Kiana, I think I've talked to you before, or at least I've seen you somewhere. She said she likes my mentorship. I appreciate that. She said her mama is homemaking. She was not a homemaker. And she's the odd one out in the family as a wife and homemaker. So it's really nice to have women to talk to you about this. And here's the thing, uh, Kiana. Your mom was a homemaker. She made a home for you and your family. It just wasn't probably as maybe as neat or as organized as you would prefer. And here's the thing that I always say about um, you take what you take from your home environment because there there are six of us and we each took something different from our home. Now, our home was certainly not the neatest or the most organized. My mom was not a good housekeeper. So I'm wondering if what you mean is that your mom wasn't a good housekeeper uh, because my mom was a good homemaker from the perspective that for the most part, our house was cozy. Everybody, we were the Kool-Aid house on the block. All the kids wanted to come down. All of my cousins and the, uh, you know, the other girl cousins, they were always at our house. Our house, <clears throat> our house was always the place where everybody was. But it was not the neatest house on the block. And the folks, all our friends knew that our house was not necessarily the neatest house. So I am wondering if that is what you mean by um, that she wasn't a homemaker because you have learned some things, a lot of things from her. You learn some things to do. And then you learn some things that you didn't necessarily want to have repeated in your home. So just to share you guys something kind of funny, and this is what I took from my home. Now, Mickey and my sister Levina might have something different, but when we were kids growing up, there were six of us. We all had to eat in the kitchen. Mom and dad ate in the dining room. And, you know, my parents were old school. My mom was a 1950s housewife. So that meant you serve the guy. So when dad was time for dinner. Dad sat down at the table and mom brought him the food. And when we girls got big enough to help cook and do that kind of stuff, we skirted around, brought him the food, brought him the bread, the plate, the salt, the pepper, everything. So I said to myself, when I get married, my husband's fixing his own plate because I was sick of scurrying around like a little servant, you know, from dad. We had to iron everything. We had to iron all his clothes, undershirts, boxer shirts, all that kind of stuff. So I thought when I get married, I ain't doing none of that. And, you know, when, so that was, oh, and then also, you know, we had Mel Mac plates and that was that kind of a plastic like melanin dinnerware that was popular during that time. Uh, glasses didn't always match. Sometimes we drank out of jelly jars, flatware didn't match. And I thought, when I grow up, everything's going to match. So that was what I took from home. So when I got married, I had my own home. I made sure that the plates matched. I didn't want Melmac. I wanted like real plates, like glass or, you know, porcelain or something like that. I wanted all the glasses to match. I wanted all of the flatware to match, that kind of thing. Now, my husband could care less about any of that, but that's what I wanted in my home. So I learned some things. Well, I learned how to set a table. I learned how to cook meals. I learned how to do laundry. I learned all those things from my mom, but I didn't learn how to keep a neat house. So there's that. Um, so now, though, today is just the two of us, and I don't always put a tablecloth on the table, but we always eat on a placemat. And so when my husband is setting the table, he just knows, get the placemat out, and that's kind of thing. Now, am I as sticky today about making sure the flatware matches or the glasses match? No, but, you know, I was then. But it is fun to have this conversation because, I mean, who really gets into talking about homemaking today? You know, not many people do. And there are many young women who want to be full time homemakers today. So when I was growing up, you know, we were going through women's lib and the 60s and, you know, the sexual revolution and all that kind of stuff. 
And a lot of women wanted to leave the home and work outside the home. Well, why would they want to do that? Well, here's the thing. Um, I got to find that. There's a comment. Okay. All right. So I got a question that I'm trying to answer here. Let me finish this one real quick. Now I, I lost my train of thought. Hmm. Well, I lost my train of thought. Sorry. I'm sorry. So Rachel asks, can I do a clean with me? She definitely prefers it when people talk while they clean instead of just music and maybe show my blessing hour. I can. And as a matter of fact, I've just worked on a video where I'm doing a 1950s housewife weekly home blessing. Just finished the video yesterday. So, but I've got to get it edited and then get that up. So I'll try to get that up and I'll talk about what I'm doing for the weekly home blessing. I'll try to for that after either that or I'll just do a separate one while I talk about what's going on there. Oh, now this is funny. Now Blue Sky says, oh, I missed it. But that's why she doesn't iron to this day because we had to iron all my dad's stuff. So again, you do take different things away from being a homemaker. That's what I was talking about and that it's fun and that when we were growing up then and why women wanted to leave the home, well, my mom did work from time to time. She was home most of the time, but then when we got to be a certain age, she did go out to work and she worked outside the home, but she worked the night shift so that she was home in the morning when we left to go to school. And then she was home in the afternoon when we came home. So she slept during the day while we were at work. And then when we had little babies, she was up all day with them while we were at school. She napped when they napped. And then when we came home, she laid down and we took care of the little ones and she got some sleep before it was time for her to go to work again. Now, what were some of the differences then? And I think I was talking to Kiana. So, so this is the thing too. So what are the differences were, were that women and men could do the same job, but they didn't get the same pay. So I am definitely a feminist and people might be thinking, you're a feminist. Yes, I am a feminist. And I think you can be a feminist and you can be feminine and you can be a homemaker. Now, why am I a feminist? Well, because when I was a young homemaker and well, first of all, when my mom was pregnant with my last sister, which was Blue Skies, as a matter of fact. She's much younger than I am. When you were so many months pregnant, like when you got to be six months pregnant, you were forced to quit work and go home. You had to go home at six months and they didn't pay you for being off during that time. So that was number one. So there were a lot of things that women had to endure just because they were women. And then even when I was a young wife, me and Grandma Sandy talked about this one day on my uh, strategy show. Women couldn't have their own credit card in their own name. I would have to get my husband to co-sign. So I remember the last time I went in to buy something and I wanted to, to sign up for some kind of account. And the guy said, well, you're going to need your husband to co-sign. I said, then I don't want it. I said, I go out of this house and I work every day just like he does. I am a professional woman. And I was, I had my own profession. I thought I want to be able to get my own credit card in my own name. And at that time, I probably made more money than he did. So it's like, why? So there were so many injustices that women had to adjust to. So a lot of women left the home and worked outside the home, that kind of thing. Well, then those that left the home started to look a little bit, you know, side-eyed at the women that chose to stay home and raise a family. And, you know, it was women doing that to each other. You know how we as women can be sometimes. And now we're at a point where you can make the choice of being a homemaker, whether you have children or not. You want to be at home and, you know, raise a home, care for your husband and family. That's fine. If you want to go outside the home and work and be a working mom, that's fine, too. You get to choose. But every now and then. We women give each other the side eye because of the choices we make. And that's something that can't happen. So Kiana is saying, yes, I'm right. She was a single mom in the army full time. So she wasn't home often. So, yeah, she created she did create a home. It just probably wasn't as cozy, maybe, 
or as neat as you would like. But there's lots of things, though, that she would have done for you that you've learned that you've taken from that home. So, yes, I'm glad you I kind of help you kind of look at that. So, yeah. So now my other sister over here uh, is cracking up. So Vaughn says she dislikes ironing with a passion. Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, look, Fly Lady Cat joined us. Oh, my goodness. I cannot believe you joined us tonight. I've been telling people all night how much I like you and how you're the best fly lady. Guys, look, she joined us. That is amazing. We talked you up, as they say. That is just too funny. So um, let's see. Let's see. We're going to go back and... Um, Rachel said she had a girlfriend come to visit a few years ago and uh, she said, uh, so Rachel cut up everyone's plate, the three kids, hers and her husband's, but her kids were so little. She, I was just used to cutting everyone's. Oh, that is so funny. Yeah, you do get used to doing that where you just kind of cut up all the food and that kind of thing when you fix the place. Yeah, that does happen. Vaughn dislikes ironing. I get it. Um and like I said, I cannot believe Fly Lady Cat joined me tonight. Thank you so much. I feel so honored now. Oh, uh, let's see. So, yes, everybody say hi to Cat. This is my Fly Lady mentor. So, everybody say hi to Cat. Um, Tara says that I am inspiring. Thank you, Tara. I appreciate that. And then this is my other sister, Lavina. She said that she is laughing how we serve daddy. She says, I have evolved and all that I teach when I do. And I've always been. A, oh, thank you. I appreciate that. Now, I definitely have evolved. So one of the things that I do do today, though, is I will fix my husband's plate and I will serve him. Now, do I earn his clothes? No. Now, his wife. <clears throat> let me get a drink. Hang on a second. His white shirts. I will iron if I absolutely have to, but usually I don't because when I do his white shirts, when I put them in the wash, as soon as they're dry, I get them out. I get them hung up. They look perfect and I get them put away so that I don't have to iron them. Um, it has to be an awful dire situation for me to iron his clothes. And I'll tell you why. Like our first set of babies were twins. So uh, when I started working after I graduated school, I started working and he was working and I was ironing his clothes and doing this and doing that. And one, one day I just thought, wait a minute, I go out of this house every day, just like he does. And then I come home and I still got a full day's worth of work to do including laundry and all this stuff. I thought, you know what? He can iron his own clothes because he knew how to iron. He ironed and took care of his own laundry when we were college students. I didn't wash and iron his clothes then. He was in one place and I was in another. So I thought he has to iron his own clothes. So he's right then. He So he irons all his own clothes. If they got to be ironed, he does it. Now, I will wash them. I do his laundry and all that kind of stuff, but I don't iron anymore. I don't even iron my own clothes. Now, I do iron my aprons. I do iron the aprons because they're cotton and most of them wrinkle when they come out of the wash. So I do iron those. Okay. So the 1950s housewife videos, they are fun. So I'm trying to get one done. So a lot of us don't iron. Michelle said her idea of ironing was throwing it back in the dryer with a damp towel. So, yes. So Keisha must have said something to Fly Lady Cat. I'm not sure what Keisha said to her, but uh, there's whatever it was. I'll just let that go. So now, um, oh, Keisha said her husband is a veteran and we iron in this house. Well, you know what? Now, this is the thing, ladies. I'm not trying to say don't iron. I'm not trying to tell you don't iron your husband's shirts or clothing. I'm not trying to start trouble in anybody's household. I'm just saying, I don't iron. 
I just, that's just the one thing. The only thing I iron is my aprons. From when I was working uh, as a nurse, you know, I had to iron my uniforms and stuff like that if they got wrinkled, but I'm one to get them out of the dryer just like that, get things hung up so that you don't have to iron them. My scrubs, I got them out of the dryer quickly. If my husband's clothes need ironing, he is very capable of ironing them. However, if you iron your husband's clothes and you enjoy it, fine, iron them. I'm not saying don't. I'm just saying part of my revolution was no ironing. That's just one of the things that I decided not to do. And yeah, Keisha, uh, our dad was a vet. And so everything had to be ironed very neatly. <laughs> So Keisha's laughing. And then so um, lovely moments, creating lovely moments. You have to tell us your name, but you said you don't iron much either. Yeah, most of us don't iron. Oh, now Levina says buy yourself a steamer. I need to get a steamer. I think Fly Lady Cat has talked about having a steamer. I don't have one. So, yeah. So, ladies, I think we're just kind of chatting here now, just chatting, chatting, chatting. Are there any other questions you need me to <laughs> do you mean you need me to answer? Because I, I don't like to keep you guys on unless there's something specific we're talking about. So if there's something specific that we need to do. Otherwise, we're going to wrap this up because we're just chatting now. Um, what do you guys want me to address next week? I'll try to come up with something on my own unless there's something in particular that you guys want. So Fly Lady Cat says a handheld steamer is great. So I keep meaning to get one, but I've not done that yet. So yeah, I'll have to do that. And several people are saying um, that they enjoy that. And then um, I met somebody's. Oh, Shaw wanted to know, how does my mentorship work? Well, I just do this like online. You know, I talked about a couple clients that I've had, but I'm not really taking clients where I'm mentoring them individually like, like this. We talk about like stuff here. So that's what I mean. How I plan my routine. You know, I don't, Rachel. And I have to tell you, I was just thinking today that I should get the Fly Lady, Lady Feather Duster because Fly Lady Cat talks about how good it is. I've got another feather duster that I just picked up at Target and that I use. And I was looking at it today and I thought, now, how am I going to, you know, what do I need to do? Like, I can't just like get the thing off of so I have to kind of beat it, you know, that kind of thing to kind of to get it clean. But I hear that that feather duster is pretty good. So I'm thinking about getting those right. So, uh, so Alexandria and Mickey are suggesting how I plan my routine. So, hmm, I guess I could do that. We'll see. Next week, routine planning options because they're likely something we're all forgetting to do. Okay, I can do that next week. I can do that. Um, let's see. Let's see. What else? I think, I think we've got everything then. Uh, Keisha said in her house, no, Vaughn says in her house, it was the same. She was glad when she joined the armies that they changed to ACUs. I'm no, I'm not sure what that is, but okay. All right. Well, uh, Fip Colston from Australia just joined us. But Fip, we're just about ready to wrap things up. So, ladies, it's been good. I'm so glad you joined me tonight. I did not intend for us to talk this long. Once I got the content done, I thought we would just wrap it up. But here we are still chatting away. So, oh, excuse me. So it was good to be with you guys tonight. And I will see you next week. Same time, same station, 7.45 p.m. on Thursday. And I guess we're going to be talking about uh, routine planning options. Sounds like that's what you guys want to hear. So Levita says, uh, where did she go? Somewhere. Oh, there she is. 
Levina says, how about self-care? We get caught up with helping so many others. Oh, well, that's something to think about. So, all right. Good night, everybody. Thank you guys so much for jumping on. And guys, don't forget, here's Fly Lady Cat here. This is my Fly Lady mentor. So be sure and check her out. She's the best one on YouTube. And good night, Bomzy. It was good to have you with us. And I will see you guys next week.